Coming up on today's show, we're going to recap all the latest on Kareem Hunt and potentially him returning to Cleveland. Then we're going to check out a report that said the Browns might still be in the trade market. So who could the Browns be looking for to maybe complete their roster, which is already completed? And make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end of the show as we have a brand new segment for you guys. Welcome in to the Bugs Bunny Cleveland Browns report. I still got big puffy cheeks. If you missed yesterday's show, I got my wisdom teeth taken out over the weekend. So still on the uh, recovery side of things here, but didn't want to go another day without getting you guys some content. So back in the office here, cranking out another video because we have plenty to discuss. So just bear with me if uh, things are mumbling my or things or words or whatever are being mumbled through to you all. But here we go. Let's start with this here from... One of my favorite reporters in Cleveland, Tony Grossi, uh, tweeting out or rather quote tweeting a question, a Q&A he did in which he responds in four words where someone asked him, is there any chance of re-signing Kareem Hunt? And he said, not in the cards. Now, first things first, is it just me? If it's just me, that's okay. But is anyone else getting a little bit tired of the Hunt conversation? Because it's not that it's necessarily just repeating the same information because we do get new wrinkles from time to time, like Tony Grossi right there saying not in the cards, but wasn't too long ago Andrew Barry said, we're not playing any games until September, so we'll look into every option possible, which sort of leaves the door open. So we get uh, back and forth reports slash rumors on Kareem Hunt potentially returning to Cleveland, but I don't know. To me, it just seems like the only way Kareem Hunt is going to return to the Browns is if an injury pops up in training camp and they decide let's go a route where we know we you know let's go a route where we know a player who knows our system and we don't have to start from scratch and teach him our playbook Kareem Hunt could step in and it would just be another Tuesday for him so that's really the only way I see Kareem Hunt resigning is if an injury pops up I'm sure I'm going to be proven wrong and the Browns are going to go sign him tomorrow with no injuries in the forecast but if they wanted Kareem Hunt, they could have gotten him by now. And it's definitely not a money issue, right? They're not trying to wait out Kareem Hunt to lower his asking price. Kareem Hunt will sign anywhere for the vet minimum, most likely, at this rate because he just wants to be on an NFL roster. Now, the other running back that has been rumored-ish to Cleveland is Ezekiel Elliott. I don't really know how much uh, interest there is in Berea for Zeke, but there's definitely some interest online. Now, when you compare these two players head-to-head -head last season, both guys' career lows and average under four yards a pop, that's sort of the kiss of death for running backs of, oh, you're getting old and you're averaging less than four yards a carry. Yeah, it's time to go a different direction. Now, the only way I really, outside of an injury, but another path, I guess I should say, for the Browns wanting to add another running back is Cleveland is all in this season. And they are not going to let Jerome Ford hold them back as RB2. So as OTAs get started and whatnot, if Jerome Ford is making Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry a bit queasy about being their RB2 and being one snap away from taking over as RB1, and they're like, we just don't think he's ready for that type of workload, maybe they decide, hey, we wanted to see and give him a shot and see how he looked through OTAs and training camp and maybe even some preseason games. But he is not looking the part as a guy who's going to be commanding, right? 123 carries, which Kareem Hunt got last year. I don't think he's going to get that money, get that many. I think uh, more will be added to Nick Chubb's plate. But even 100 carries, 95 carries, like that's a serious workload for an RB2. So for that reason, if the Browns decide Jerome Ford just is not that guy yet, and they are, which they are, all in on 2023. They're not going to let that be the thing that holds them back. You see what I'm saying? Like, if they feel like this is the last little piece of the puzzle we need to fit, they'll go out and get a veteran running back. But I think they want to at least give Jerome Ford a chance to prove himself before they go sign Zeke or Kareem Hunt. Now, pick a running back for me. If you want Jerome Ford, type his jersey number 34 down in the comment section. If you'd rather go and sign a free agent, give me an F.A., I'm going to wait to give you my answer until I see how OTAs and maybe even in a training camp looks, right? Jerome Ford looked awesome in the preseason last year. I'm willing to get, bet that he's going to be a valuable contributor to this team, and I'm not ready to punt on the guy before we even play a snap of non-padded practice this offseason. 
Now, next up on the show, I want to discuss the Browns potentially still in the wide in the, me, in the trade market. So after landing Zadarius Smith, it would appear, or at least you would assume, okay, the Browns have had their fun for the offseason. They traded for Elijah Moore. They traded for Zadarius Smith. Surely they are, you know, tapped out of trades. Well, not so fast. Mary Kay did a mailbag, and someone asked her about maybe doing another trade, and here's what she said. Browns GM Andrew Barry might have another trade or two left in him because he does a tremendous job of finding players that need, need a change of scenery, such as Amari Cooper and Zadarius Smith, and working out a deal. Now, the Browns don't have a long list of needs, and these are really minute things, right? But if I had to come up with Brown's biggest needs right now, probably linebacker, just because I can't confidently say who the starting three linebackers will be due to injuries right now. Running back, like we just touched on, is a little finer detail, but I think it's probably a bigger need than some other spots. Defensive tackle, mostly because of the Perrion Winfrey unknown situation, and do you really want Jordan Elliott uh, starting again? I don't, but that might be the case here. And then tight end, Mary Kay included. I think after signing Jordan Akins and extending David Njoku, you have Harrison Bryant. I feel like they're pretty good at tight end, but they don't really have necessarily a true run-blocking tight end. So that could be a spot where they sign a bit of a no-namer just to help their ground game a little bit. Now, we're going to discuss some potential trade targets and whatnot in just a moment. But help us reach our next milestone here at the channel, 19,500 subscribers. We are 43 subs away. So hit that big sub button if you have not already. Plus, if you hate the Pittsburgh Steelers, you are in good hands here at the official F Pit YouTube channel. Now, the biggest need is probably linebacker, just because all three of those players ended the year on IR last year. And I don't think all three are going to walk into training camp 100%. Do not be surprised if Walker or Taki Taki starts camp on the pup list, right? Denzel Ward last year started camp on the pup list due to an injury and what seemed to be a small injury too. He suffered during OTA, like the last day of it in June. So Taki Taki's coming off an ACL tear. Walker's coming off a quad tear. JOK a foot injury. So the Browns might be looking to maybe add some more linebackers because they are definitely not messing around this year and they're not going to take a chance on anything. Now, what's interesting is the Browns, on the other hand, maybe feel like we can or they can roll with this linebacker room because Jim Schwartz doesn't utilize a ton of blitzing linebackers in his scheme, right? So he can have some relatively cheap and maybe underwhelming-ish linebackers in the middle of the defense because that's not what makes his defense successful or not. He's very reliant on safeties. I want to show you some interesting stats here. So I pulled up the snap counts from his 2020 Eagles defense and then the 2022 Browns defense. And you can see Jalen Mills and Grant Delpit were both the number one snap getters and safeties tend to be because they don't really step off the field for rotations all that much. But I want you to look at Marcus Epps versus Her uh, Ronnie Harrison. Marcus Epps for Jim Schwartz in that 2020 Eagles defense, 364 snaps. Ronnie Harrison for Joe Woods last year had 259 snaps. So if the Browns, after signing Rodney McLeod, who you can see was, you know, Jim Schwartz was a big fan of back in 2020, plan to roll with a lot of three safety looks of Delpit, Thornhill, and McLeod, maybe they feel like they can get by with the bare minimum at linebacker because they're not planning on trotting out three linebackers every single play on defense. Now, if Andrew Barry does sniff a good deal out there, he will pick up the phone. We should know that by now. Now, there are some notable players on the market, it appears. Uh, some of them just don't apply to the Browns. Ryan Tannehill will cross that out. Austin Eckler, I just think it's probably a bit too rich for Cleveland, although Chubb and Eckler would be an awesome, like, just all-star duo right there. Dalvin Cook, no. D-Hop, not going to happen anymore. Sorry, Brown Tiger. Quez Watkins, no. Ed Oliver, I think it probably just cost too much, along with maybe uh, Chase Young after landing Zadarius Smith. But there is one guy on that list that does sort of come at a position of need for Cleveland. Now, before we look at that player, if you have not checked out the Browns t-shirt combo over at Fanatics, you are missing out. Make sure you go ahead to chatsports.com slash CLE combo. That link's in the comments and the description of today's video. So check it out today. You will thank me later once you have not one, but two brown shirts on sale as well. 
Now, the one player that sort of caught my eye is Devin White. Remember, he requested a trade back in April. Now, the Bucks have said they don't have plans on trading him. Show of hands, who remembers when the Giants extended OBJ and said we didn't extend him to trade him? One week later, they traded him to Cleveland. Now, Devin White, the former fifth overall pick out of LSU, is entering the last year of his contract, and he's sort of a tough nut to crack because on one hand, he's a notable name, right? When you pick fifth overall, people are going to remember your name. Uh, he had a great season for the Bucks when they went on to win the Super Bowl, but PFF doesn't like him. They ranked him 74th out of 81 last year. Like, how is that possible? When you look at his career stats, Guy had five and a half sacks last year as an off-ball linebacker. Devin White is the most athletic linebacker probably in football. Um, he is one of the best blitzing linebackers. But at the same time, the Browns, like I said, under Jim Schwartz, are not going to be a heavy blitz crew. Now, maybe that changes based on the personnel. And if you have Devin White, you should use him properly. But the stats look pretty good. But the maybe coverage and tackling isn't always the best with Devin White. I want to say that there's no chance the Browns get Devin White because it would cost too much to get him. But how can I stand here right now and look you guys in the eyes and say that with a straight face with my Bugs Bunny cheeks here because Andrew Barry just got Darius Smith for pennies on the dollar, right? So if there's any GM that's going to land a marquee player for way less than maybe what you think it would cost, it would be Andrew Barry, right? He fleeced the Cowboys for Amari Cooper. I mean, I don't know if he fleeced the Vikings because it wasn't like the Vikings were dying to hold on to Darius Smith, but both players he got for more or less day three pick swaps. Now, I don't think Devin White's going for the same rate. He's at a different point in his career, but the point remains, no one, and I mean no one, is allowed to call you crazy, insane, or stupid, or dumb for proposing the Browns trade for a player because that is the DNA of Andrew Barry. He loves trading for players. He has a trade addiction. He is a flat-out trade addict. So would you trade for Devin White? Yes or no? I'm going to give you my take in just a second, but I want to hear from everyone watching right now. What's your opinion? Would you go ahead and green light a trade for Devin White? Let me know down in the comment section. For me, I'm going to pass, not because I think Devin White's a bad player. I think maybe he's a bit overrated, and he's got a lot of tackles because he gets beaten coverage, and then he makes a tackle from behind. So it looks good, but it really wasn't that good, and you should not have made that guy open in the first place. But that's for another time. I'm going to pass on trading for Devin White because he's entering the last year of his contract, and he wants a big contract extension. Now, a team trading for him doesn't have to give him that contract extension, but usually when teams make a trade like that, about 30 minutes after the trade goes through, a contract extension is already magically worked out with the agent. So it could be just a one-year rental. Now, I don't see the Browns being interested in a one-year rental. Well, that's not true because they got Zedarius Smith, and that right now is looking like just a one-year deal, although they could re-sign him. But for me, I, I just don't see the Browns wanting to give up more draft picks, which they've already given up some, and you can't really extend him, right? Look at the Browns' cap space for 2024. It's negative 86 million. I don't say this to scare you. I say this as a reminder, the Browns are simply not going to be as active in free agency next year. And if they really want to go all in on 2023, Devin White could be a good pickup because he will make this football team better. But also, the world is not ending after 2023, right? At some point, you got to consider your future as well. And I would hate to see this team, you know, come up just short this season. And it's like, well, that was it. We went all chips in and we left nothing squatch for the future because we're negative $86 million in the cap. And we gave up picks for Zadarius Smith and Devin White. And we're already without a first round pick from Deshaun Watson. Like, it seems a bit dicey. Also, the Browns, if you look at the cap hits for 2024, there's some ways they can save some money. I am sure they will restructure Deshaun Watson's contract again and maybe Miles Garrett's. And maybe they move on from Amari Cooper if he shows that he's slowing down a little bit because $23 million is a big cap hit. But Denzel Ward and Joe Petonio, like those guys, you're not cutting them. So the Browns can save some money by moving on from some players. But at the end of the day, they are not going to be as active in free agency as they were this past season, and they're going to have to hit on their draft picks a lot more. So you need draft picks to then hit on said draft picks, which is why I'm going to pass on Devin White. Now, before we get on out of here, that new segment I talked to you guys about, we unveiled it during yesterday's show, but in case you missed it, 
For the rest of the offseason, I know things can get a bit dry and a bit boring, if you will. So I want to just do a random pick a card. I got the inspiration from part of my take. They do a lottery ball machine at the end of their show. So I'm just going to shuffle this deck, and I'm simply just going to pick the card at the top. And play along. Let me know what card you were going to guess or what card you did guess down in the comment section. I'll guess a card. It's a 1 out of 52 chance. And whichever producer is with me for that day, I'm going to have them you know, pick a card with me. So Tex, you want to hop on the mic? All right, everyone, welcome on Matthew McCullough. Tex, which uh, which card are you picking? I'm gonna go with the Seven of Spades. Seven of Spades. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna give it one more good shuffle here. All right. I'm gonna go. Yesterday was three of diamonds, and I went three of clubs. I was just off. Okay. I'm gonna go one last shuffle. Um, Ten of Hearts. Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. Okay. That's gonna do it for us on today's show. We'll sign off, and I'll see you guys later.